Review 2023 Nissan Aria E for Orki takes AWD beyond traction. The sure-footed traction and all-weather capability of all-wheel drive is something many families now see as a must-have in any utility vehicle. Likewise, we've come to expect that AWD electric vehicles like the 2023 Nissan Aria E for Orki are quicker accelerating, too, with dual motors rather than a single motor. With its additional motor unit at the rear wheels, the dual motor E for Orki effectively doubles the single motor Aria's propulsion setup, amounting to 389 horsepower and 442 pound foot, which is a 63% bump in power in the E for Orki and exactly double the torque of the single motor version. That means 0 to 60 miles per hour acceleration drops to just 4.8 seconds versus 7.2 seconds in the FWD Aria. In a first drive this past week on storm-battered highways and backroads connecting Northern California wine country to the coast, it didn't take me long to feel the extra punch of the dual motor muscle. At all but a standing start, it's not subtle. While the front-wheel drive Aria feels quite quick from about 10 miles per hour up past 50 miles per hour, the Aria E for Orki delivers a near-silent punch, making it much quicker through those speeds to well past speed limits. And it can be breathtakingly quick in the 40 to 70 miles per hour zone at which you might be likely to stomp your right foot down for a pass. But wait, there's more. If the stylized E for Orki badging isn't enough of a hint, Nissan wants us to see its take on AWD as something transcendent versus all the rest of the entries in this crowded field now including the Tesla Model Y, Hyundai Ioniq 5, Kia EV6, and Volkswagen ID.4. Aria E for Orki Ride and Handling In the interest of ride, handling, and overall dynamics, E for Orki can actuate each of the four wheels brakes individually while running each of the two motors individually in its propulsion or regenerative braking mode. As Nissan points out, E for Orki is a direct descendant of the GTR Supercars a teaser all-wheel drive system, as well as prior traction-oriented AWD systems. But if Nissan GTR-style four-wheel drifts are on the menu, or even balancing corner attitude on the throttle, or throwing your passengers around with G-forces, you'll be sorely disappointed. Then again, why would you be expecting to get the tail out in a rather tall crossover? Nissan has instead dialed into the system the personality that makes sense for the Aria, which essentially makes it feel like an unbelievably well-coordinated front-wheel drive vehicle. And here, the way Nissan has harnessed all those vehicle dynamic smarts goes to something better, it makes you feel like a better driver, and it will make everyone in the vehicle happier. What this also means is that Nissan has been able to tune the Aria E for Orki softer than rival dual-motor electric SUVs. That's a big selling point. This is among the most buttoned-down crossovers that can accelerate to 60 miles per hour in less than 5 seconds, and it does so without complex air suspensions or adjustable dampers. It's just working the motors and brakes from time to time to prevent any uncouth body motions. Dynamically, Nissan has made it hard to fluster the E for Orki system. Try to trip it up by tucking in the front wheels even tighter and the rear inside tire tugs as hard as it can for traction while it scrubs just a little bit of speed away. Again, it makes you look like a better driver. In an exercise at Sonoma Raceway, replicating a quick lane change and corner with an increasingly tighter radius, like the above, but try, I could feel E for Orki at work from the driver's seat. Yet while I stood back and observed other drivers doing the same, I saw much body lean from the outside. As a testament to the system, it isn't something you feel from inside the vehicle. Aria E for Orki range and charging. The Aria E for Orki has normal, eco, sport, and snow modes, and the sport setting adds a supplemented propulsion sound and makes the accelerator a little touchier and the steering a little firmer, while eco softens your inputs to the accelerator. But unlike some other AWD EVs it doesn't change the torque distribution between the front and rear motors. Most of the time, the E for Orki system hovers around a 50 50th distribution, according to Nissan, making small adjustments to vary the torque between the front and rear wheels. That doesn't seem to be to the detriment of real-world range or efficiency. 
over nearly 170 miles of spirited driving on back roads and freeways, switching off between modes and styles, the Oria E4 Orki averaged 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour according to the trip computer, enough to easily beat the 267 mile range rating that came with this top of the line Oria E4 Orki Platinum Plus, equipped with the larger 91 kilowatt hour battery pack, 87 kilowatt hours usable. Platinum Plus models, including the one I tested, offer available 20-inch wheels, which are factored into that lower range rating. But that and the lack of a brittle ride are further testaments to the effectiveness of the drive system and its tuning. Temperatures were mild, ranging from the mid-50s to low 60s Fahrenheit, but I had the climate control on for most of the day. The Oreo includes a battery warmer and heat pump to help minimize losses in the cold and speed up fast charging. With a larger pack, Nissan says that the Aurea can DC fast charge from 20 to 80% in 40 minutes. On a 240 volt AC connection, the Aurea's 7.2 kilowatt onboard charger boosts the battery from 0 to 100% in 14 hours. Aurea E, for Orki Comfort. The Aurea's overall level of cabin quiet left me awestruck. On a sunny but still quite breezy day after a turbulent series of storms that left California wine country flooded and still recovering, dried mud and dusty grit covered many of the road surfaces, and I could feel the crosswinds from time to time through the steering wheel. But with an acoustic windshield and acoustic glass not only at the front windows but the rears too, the Aurea seals out wind noise as well as virtually all road noise. It's an impressive level of quiet, perhaps aided by all the soft, textured surfaces inside. If Nissan's Infiniti luxury brand were to ever get a version of the Aurea, it's hard to fathom where it could even improve in comfort and quiet. In seating and materials, the Aurea feels plush and well-equipped. Front seats have long cushions and good bolstering, and the back seats feel soft and adult-sized in a class where they can sometimes skimp. Top-notch details establish a certain texture and pattern to everything from the dash to the lighting, it's all coordinated to keep satisfying on the finer points, yet at first look it's refreshingly simple. The center console has power sliding adjustments in most models, with a built-in tray table as well. Second row passengers get full climate control vents. Aurea E, for Orki pricing and tech. Upper trims of the Aurea include a head-up display, a panoramic roof, power tailgate, power front seats, heated front and rear, outboard, seats, and a wireless charging pad. The Aurea E for Orki costs $4,000 more than in front-wheel drive form. The version I drove was the top E for Orki only Platinum Plus model that cost $61,485, including the $1,295 destination charge. With the smaller 66 kilowatt hour battery pack, 63 kilowatt hours usable, the Aurea E for Orki starts at $44,485 in base front-wheel drive engage plus form and $48,485 with E for Orki. If you want E for Orki in combination with the larger pack, the entry point is the $52,485 engage plus model. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.